One challenge that comes with living in such a history-rich area is separating fact and fiction. And that is especially true when it comes to something as secretive as the Underground Railroad. The lure of what we see today gives us many chances to think about it in very mythical ways. John Goldthwait wonders if a story about his 19th century home is true or just a myth. The white chimneys with the black top. Is that an indication that this was a safe house for the Underground Railroad? To answer that question, historian Lamurchi Frazier suggests... Trace the abolitionist steps in a place like Beacon Hill. Because of its architecture and its strategic location, Beacon Hill is actually one of the places in the country that has most Underground Railroad sites. The Underground Railroad refers to people who sought freedom from enslavement and those who helped them. It was most active in the early to mid-19th century when Beacon Hill was home to a large, thriving, free black community. Beacon Hill becomes this very strategic community. There are alleyways where people could be protected. There are floors and, and basements where you cannot see from the street level what's going on. While slavery had been outlawed here in Massachusetts, action by the U.S. Congress meant that even this free state was not always so free for black people. The first Fugitive Slave Act does not guarantee the safety of anyone who has been formerly enslaved. In fact, they can be returned if they're found out to be in a free state. Today, a lot of mythology exists around the Underground Railroad. But many of the stories about hiding places or secret codes like maps sewn into quilts are almost certainly untrue. You know, there are stories written for children that give this romantic kind of view to the Underground Railroad. But we have to really look at the very instrumental places and strategies that were utilized. Amble up Phillips Street and you come across the home of businessman and community leader, Lewis Hayden. As a formerly enslaved man from Kentucky, he was so determined as he was assisted in his escape to help and assist those who had experienced slavery and needed their freedom. Hayden and his wife Harriet ran this boarding house that whatever the chimney looked like also served as an important safe house. Scores of freedom seekers took refuge here at some point. Harriet Beecher Stowe came here to interview people who were actually housed in Hayden's home. And at that time, she reports that there were 13 people who were being housed here. Right here. In right this, here. Right in here this in this home. building. Just a few blocks away stands this reminder that, as Frazier puts it, freedom wasn't free. A small plaque is the only hint that this was once a popular gaming house owned by entrepreneur John Coburn. There were those who were seeking entertainment, game playing, an opportunity to be together and have camaraderie. There were funds set aside from that money for abolition. They knew that there were costs that had to be incurred in rebuilding your life. You can still walk some of the nearly hidden pathways, like Holmes Alley, where self-liberated individuals could travel discreetly out of the view of so-called slave catchers. And on Joy Street is the African Meeting House, the oldest surviving black church in America. Then an indispensable community hub where luminaries, including Mariah Stewart and Frederick Douglass once spoke. In Beacon Hill, you have a deliberate force that is uh, those who are preparing for liberty to be a reality and slavery to end and the helping people to get to safety. But in this neighborhood, so rich in 19th century history, there is one thing that's actually a little difficult to encounter. We can't even see the chimneys here. So why might a house outside the city have such a distinct chimney? We turn to historian Rachel Hoyle. They used a certain whitewash, some sort of like guard against the weather and against things getting into your chimney. At the top, you don't want to leave it white because it'll look ugly. Because it's going to so turn black anyway. Right. <laughs> so you paint the top black. That actually does make a lot of sense. And while the story of the white chimney as a signal might be an enticing myth, it's got nothing on the very true tale of the men and women who gave and risked so much to make real history right here. You know, learn more, even on our own. Research. But there is something about actually encountering the authentic sites of what leads to American freedom. Our thanks to Emerson College for their support of the Curiosity Desk. And hey, if you like Boston history, check out this episode about the city's most curious historic statue, a 12-foot bronze pear.